Hey everybody, welcome back to another video with Havoc the DGen. I'm Havoc the DGen, and if you're here, chances are you're also some form of a DGen. With that being said, I am not a financial advisor. Any of the things that you see or hear here is not financial advice, should not be considered financial advice. You should not listen to random people on the internet about what to do with your money. This for entertainment purposes only, and hopefully to help you understand how to do a little bit deeper research on projects. Right now we're on a site called What The Fork, and it's whatthefork.xyz. I'll put a link down below in the description. This is one of the sites that I use to go find upcoming projects, new projects, projects that have been spotted as rugs or suspicious, rule them in or rule them out of things that I'm interested in. And basically we're going into what is a fork, how do we find good ones, how do we tell the good ones from the bad ones? Now you're not always gonna be able to tell, but hopefully we can shed some light on things you could do to get a little more insight. So first, what is a fork? Now there are multiple different types of fork, variations of forks and so on. You've got hard forks, soft forks, forks like Ethereum Classic and so on. Today we're focused on forks in the Tomb, Olympus, Node, Univ, Titano style forks, which is basically someone going and taking the public code from one project, copying that and altering it slightly or sometimes not at all to create their own protocol and further their vision in this decentralized finance space. So if we go to Tomb Forks right here, you're gonna see their featured section, which typically these are paid ads. That could be a good thing, that can be a bad thing. On the bright side, they're investing in their marketing. On the downside, I don't know what their criteria is to require you to be allowed to actually be featured. Real quick though, if you're enjoying this content, if you're finding some value here, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers as soon as possible. And don't forget to follow on Twitter. You'll see the link down below in the description. Click the like button, drop a comment, all that fun stuff. You know how it works. Now let's keep going. Now let's talk about some of the different things we're gonna see when we go into what the fork. For instance, right here we have renounced. The renounce badge is given to projects that have renounced the ownership of the contracts, which means they can't modify that contract anymore. Now, renouncing the contract is not something that happens on every type of project, but it's very common on Tomb Forks. The next badge we're gonna see right here is audited. So audited actually means that somebody has gone through and checked the code. Typically, this is by a third party company and ideally you want it to be from a notable one. Let's check this one out right now. So right here, we're gonna see if we scroll down, we have audited by Oxcart. You can come in here, you can see what did they say about the project. Keep in mind, the audit is actually on the code. It's not on whether or not it's gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's just on the code. Projects can be audited and still fail. You see right here, it says the purpose of the audit was to ensure that no issues were introduced with the changes to the original code and that known vulnerabilities are fixed. As we scroll down, we'll see the contracts that they've checked out. They give us their classifications of different issue severity. And we see here that they didn't find any issues. And then we've got the conclusion here, which gives us kind of the overview you, uh, no serious issues were found in the audited changes. Then you go down here, you got the disclaimer, then you've got all the code that is basically the rest of this document. There you go. So let's take a quick look at the Zero X Guard site or the Ox Guard site, whatever it's called. You can see they offer audits. They also offer KYC and these are really not cheap. So if a company is actually investing in the audit, it does show that they're trying to portray security and sustainability long term. Typically, you're not going to invest 900 to six grand in order to audit a project that you don't think is gonna work long-term. Now you can learn more about OxGuard on their website. I'll put that in the link down below in the description. Now, the other thing that I like to do personally is go and check out their Twitter. Did they actually mention the fact that they audited this project? In this case, uh, aims.defi. So if we go here, uh, speaking of which, if you're on Twitter, follow Havoc the DGen. I'd really appreciate it. But let's keep scrolling. Let's see, is Ames DeFi on here? Interestingly enough, I actually don't see it on here. So let's check out Ames DeFi. Let's go down to their Twitter. And the first thing I notice is that they have Harmony One ceased DeFi One with their audit by Oxcart. All right, so digging in a little bit deeper, here's what I found is they do have quartz.defi that was on their audit list. This is the same one that we see when we use the Ames link. Quartz in January was for that ceases one that I mentioned on Harmony. And then we have quartz again in March. Now keep in mind this ceased DeFi, this one that we found, they have 5,000 in value. Lock. This thing 
kind of looks like a flop. Ames, on the other hand, has 194,000, so it's doing a little bit better. But I think this could partially be due to the fact that it's listed on what the fork. It's listed as audited, as renounced. But the one thing I don't see is a KYC, which is the other badge that I was going to get to. If we go down here, we'll see KYC. Basically, that means that they've paid a company to verify their identity, such as in this case, if we go to Beast Finance, April Clock. And you'll see right here where it says about April Clock KYC. They use rigorous AML and KYC regulatory compliant identity verification process to ensure the accuracy of the identification information submitted to us. How does that affect you though? What does that mean if they're KYC? So in the event of a rug pull or a hack, April Clock will submit the individual's information or the KYC individual's information to law enforcement in the city country of the KYC party. However, April Clock will never reveal the KYC party's identity to the public. So how comfortable do I feel after somebody gets that KYC? Uh, a little more, but it's really just a precaution in case they actually do something malicious. And now there are multiple different KYC companies, multiple different audit companies. Again, you wanna check these out, look at what their criteria is, look at what they're saying before you jump into any projects. For me, I find it interesting that this one right here is renounced, it's audited, but it is not KYC. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further, you're gonna see one right here. It's another, it's KYC. It hasn't been renounced. Now, this one doesn't launch until the 15th, and they typically don't renounce before the launch. Because once they've renounced, they cannot adjust the code, they cannot fix anything. For instance, I was in a fork recently that had an issue with their contract after they renounced it. They had to come out with a complete V2 token and it basically tanked the original token. And next, let's talk about my favorite badge to see on these which doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna succeed, but it's a good indicator that the person who is creating it, the team behind it, does believe in it enough to actually make themselves known, and that is the doxed badge. So if we scroll down, we're gonna see one right, let's see here, right here, DGen Finance. They are doxed, and that is one thing that I do love to see when it's possible. It doesn't indicate that the thing is gonna succeed, that it's gonna fail, either or. It just means that they believe in it enough to put their face on it, which to me does mean something. Also, just because you don't see the badges for renounced, KYC, things like that, doesn't mean they actually haven't been. For instance, Code 7 Finance, KYC by April Clock, and they have a link to it. So they actually have been KYC, it's just not on there as a badge. See, a lot of these do not have a KYC, they do not have an audit, they do not have anything, they're just in existence. Just because they don't have a KYC or they don't have an audit and they haven't been renounced, does that mean it's going to rug for sure? Not necessarily. Look at Breaking Finance, for instance. They came out on the 5th of March. Let's take a look at what is going on with them. $95 in total value locked. So what do you think? Are those badges maybe somewhat important? What about Tomb Shark Finance? That's never good to see. They also have an interesting badge called SUS, and you can see it back here behind this. It's already rugged, so it doesn't really matter, but there was a badge that said SUS above it, meaning they saw something suspicious in it, someone reported something suspicious in it, and for that reason, it was marked as SUS. Next thing you know, it rugged. And you can see right here, it says, Genesis contains hard rug code. So you can get rugged in the Genesis pools, which is why you wanna make sure you're doing your research. Now we have another one here, Sub-Zero. This is on AVAX. And if we go to this one, we're gonna see they're actually doing quite well. So they're slightly below peg. They have over a million dollars in value locked. Now this one is by the people who did Papa Dow, which unfortunately didn't make it either. So will Sub-Zero make it? Will they not? I don't know yet. We'll see. And just because it's renounced, does that mean that they're actually going to be safe? Not necessarily. Again, look at Clown Finance. The dev dumped pre-minted tokens stored in an external wallet. There are malicious actors out there that are trying to just take people's money. Here's another one, Bogdanoff Finance. I don't know exactly what happened with that one, but it was also renounced. Still rug. Zeus Fi, minted and dump. B Phantom Farm. Now this one was renounced. It wasn't a rug. It just didn't make it. Dead. Phantom Wolf Finance. Dev abandoned the project after obtaining deposit fees from gen pools. And here's one, Doom Finance. This is renounced. It launches tomorrow. So they've renounced before they even launch, which again, some do, some don't. One thing I do try to see is if they have a KYC, I'm, I'm gonna feel a little bit more comfortable if it says in the docs that they intend to renounce. Probably not gonna go real big on that. But if they're intending to renounce and they have a KYC, that does for me usually mean a little bit more. 
but you always have to do your own research. So this one's marked as sus already. And if we go here, we're gonna see they have reviewed by RugDoc, which is another company that checks things out for people, uh, featured on April Clock. Notice that, featured on April Clock, not KYC'd on April Clock. So if you go to their site and you see that KYC logo that you're used to, notice that it actually says featured on April Clock, which if you go to April Clock, it says right here, featured on April Clock badges. Requirements. You must have your launch published on April clock. That's all that is required to use that batch. So this again, doesn't mean that they've been KYC. Now I don't see the notes to why this is being called sus. Again, do your own research, go into the discord, go into the Twitter, the telegram, check out the website, do as much research as you can before jumping into something like this to any of these. Here's one right here, renounced peg zero, which basically means it failed. See? So I'm showing you that What the Fork is a great resource for finding new projects. It's not the only resource, and it's not and it's not where you should stop your research. But it's a great place to find new things to begin your research. So that's just the Tomb Forks. You can get into Olympus Forks. You can get into Node Forks, Univ Forks, Titano Forks, whatever kind of forks that you're interested in. And you can find them on all types of different chains. If you're specifically looking to get into Tomb Forks, I do recommend checking out Dow King. And I'll link one of the videos that he recently did below where he talks about how to actually find undervalued forks, how to trade inside of forks and so on. And again, keep in mind, just because you don't see the badges here doesn't mean that they haven't been KYC'd, audited, renounced contracts and so on. Hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Drop me a comment, let me know below, share the video with somebody you know, and follow me on Twitter. I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.